The city of Jingdezhan in southeastern China supplied porcelain to the emperors of China for more than 500 years. Porcelain clay is mixed from two local materials, China stone and kaolin. China stone is a granitic rock whose Chinese name means white bricks. At mills on the riverbank, water-powered wooden pestles crush the rock into a fine powder. The powder is mixed with water in large tanks, cleaned of impurities, and formed into bricks. The white clay known as kaolin comes from Gaoling Mountain. Teams of miners dig the kaolin and process it in a manner similar to that used for china stone. In Jingdezhen workshops, the china stone and kaolin are pulverized again and mixed together with water, cleaned, then left to dry until the porcelain clay is the correct consistency. Workers knead the porcelain clay by foot and by hand until it is smooth and pliable and ready to be shaped. Large pieces require a team of potters to shape them. Years of practice lie behind the potter's seemingly effortless transformation of the clay into vessel shapes. Other artisans shave millimeters of clay from the sides and rims of the partly dried vessels using specialized tools. They also carve bases or foot rings from the flat bottoms. After drying completely, the pieces are ready for decoration. At Jingdezhan, most porcelains are decorated with designs painted directly on the hard clay with cobalt. which turns blue after glazing and firing. The colorless glaze is mixed from china stone, burnt limestone, and water. Specialists apply glaze to small pieces by dipping them directly into the vat of glaze. Larger pieces are glazed by blowing the solution onto the piece through a tube that has a fine mesh on one end. This technique produces a thin, even layer of glaze. After firing, the glaze will form a glassy coating that protects the surface and adds a beautiful luster. After the pieces have been glazed, they are prepared for firing. Thick-walled containers made of coarse clay, called saggers, protect the porcelains during firing. Firing takes place in a huge kiln built of bricks. Workers pile up towers of saggers inside the kiln in a carefully prearranged order. Once the saggers are in place, the entrance to the kiln is sealed with bricks. Workers continuously feed firewood into the kiln as the temperature slowly climbs to 1,250 degrees centigrade. Workers at the Imperial Kiln did not have any mechanical devices to measure temperature. The kiln specialist gauged the temperature by watching the flames gradually turn from red to bluish white. There was little room for error, and the success of the entire process depended on a proper firing. Prayers were offered to the kiln god before the firing began. The kiln is allowed to cool somewhat before it is emptied. Some porcelains are complete at this point, but others receive additional decoration. A second firing at a low temperature in a small kiln melts the enamels and fixes them on the porcelain. In the past, Workshop supervisors selected only perfect pieces to be sent to the imperial court. Even today, pieces that do not stand up to the harsh inspection are immediately destroyed.